the old family vehicular. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are getting in Rosine right now. We're gonna be heading over to the parents' soon to be old house. They are moving out of that to a different place pretty nice we're gonna be getting nasty red today we are here in the nasty red i saw you guys' comments you said hey yeah we'd like to see some more video with nasty red so i thought what the heck let's do it not entirely sure what all we are or are not going to film with this truck while we have it today but i know one of the things i want to try to do is install new gauges because this truck ain't got no gauges so we got nasty red over here we've got the gauges here and i'm going to go through what all we have there's the pillar that snaps over your original one there's actually a um i don't know what this is for but it's an rpm gauge and it's got like a ship light and stuff i'm guessing this was for when i had the beater 12 out the two-wheel drive i was going to put this in there uh, so that you could actually see your rpm because i didn't have an rpm gauge in it for your trans temp gauge okay well i'm kind of confused because there's two sets of gauges in here <laughs> holy crap more accessories another trans temp thing or actually that one might be for fuel pressure yeah that's for fuel pressure another little pod thing for holding gauges bunch of wiring color coordinator of course i think this is for mounting to like your steering wheel column and a fuel pressure gauge i bought a setup for the first gen the beater 12 out that we never even got to i completely forgot about it. i ordered it never installed it it was going to be the three that mount like on the corner of the dash it was going to have the three gauges there and then i just never got around to it and then i got this one so i could have a fuel pressure gauge in the first gen mounted on the steering wheel more wiring a fuel pressure snubber valve some interior screws banjo bolt adapter so yeah we've got plenty of stuff here so here's everything i pulled out of that box and you know what i'm pretty sure i never got to this modification on this truck or the first gen but glow shift actually did work with us as a sponsorship we did some gauges on i think it was my silver dually and then at the time i had that silver dually they had sent me gauges for nasty red the silver dually and that first gen that i had the beater 12 valve and i just never got to the other two trucks i did the ones but i never got to the ones on this truck or the other ones so now we've got tons of gauges a lot of a uh, lot of stuff a lot a lot of items here they've always worked with us and been awesome so definitely go check them out just an old farm truck highway speeds here we go she's smoking Wait, I think I might see a truck back behind us that we might be able to troll. We'll see, but I think there's a big old stanced out Duramax dually back there. The steering on this is terrible though, but he can't really accelerate up with the semi right here. And then he's gonna cut me off, isn't he? This thing is nice and airtight, luckily, so there's no wind noise, you know? Sometimes I feel bad, like, trying to troll people on the highway, because it's like, you got people that are like, they'll have good fun, you know? They'll, they'll mess with you too and go at it just for fun. And then you got people that are like, dude, leave me alone. Well, there goes the Duramax over there. Between all the semis just piling up through, and I mean, I could not get up beside him and every time I got beside him a semi pulled up beside him or pulled up or put over or they got over in the lane in front of me or him and it was just not working out kind of a bummer I thought that'd be so stinking fun he was probably somebody that actually would have went at it and had some fun with it but what can you do it's not worth stopping up traffic and causing an accident over it now Josh Bassford from Auburn Illinois won this Ford F-250. If you want to win a truck too, go to lmpgear.com, place an order, and you can be winning our built third gen 5.9 Cummins plus $5,000 cash. That giveaway will not last forever, just like the last 20 plus giveaways we've done. So 
get entered while you can and you can be taking home your dream pickup truck. Now I would love to go step by step through this entire process of installing these gauges, but I have done that on probably five or six different videos over the last four years of doing this whole YouTube truck, truck giveaway, truck building, truck modifying stuff. I've done a lot of gauges. So if you guys wanna see those, there's plenties of videos on there. If you just look through, like go to my videos and just scroll through, there you're gonna find several videos over the last couple of years that are titled, you know, new gauges on, blank or new you know whatever truck and then um the videos are all pretty much the same it's going through step by step of installing the gauges and how that all works but for this one i'm just going to slap my gopro on my head mount or my chest mount and get to installing these and then once we're done that's when it's going to come into the best part of the content which is actually getting this truck on the street and seeing how the gauges are performing seeing how the temperatures are doing and regulating everything and just kind of seeing how the truck's really running because the truck seems to be of running great for the last three years with everything done to it but we have not had any gauges other than factory gauges and that's going to hopefully change today the gauges installed but I was working over here and uh, I heard some chirping and I'm thinking what in the heck like what is that sound and uh, well this hen has been sneaking in the crack of the barn here apparently and she hatched out a bunch of chicks pretty sure she's got a full dozen there and a few more eggs that haven't hatched yet but so I put some little bit of food I smashed up and put a little dish of water there. So I don't know how that's gonna go. Um, I'm guessing we're gonna have to separate them from her soon just because they're gonna need, you know, fed every single day and she's not really gonna be able to feed them, I don't think. He doesn't have a fuse panel cover, so I put some uh, painter's tape 
stuck together and layered it up and made almost like a little cover just to kind of hide the wires. But here we are, we got the gauges in the truck. I'm gonna pull it out so you guys can see it because the lighting is right in our face and it's not that great. So let's get this thing started up. Here comes the gauges. We're gonna choose our color. Let's see, which color do we want? Let's do green, <laughs> sounds fun. There we go, let's do green. Okay. So we've got transmission temp, boost, and exhaust temperature up here. And uh, I'll pull the truck out, then I'll show you how I did all the wiring, just so you guys can have an idea. I'm not, I wasn't doing this video to do step-by-step -step on how to do gauges again, because I've done that so many times. But let me pull it out and I'll just show you at least how things are ran real quick. Didn't have any hardware with it to fasten them, so I just did one self-tapper right up here where it's all out of the way of all the wiring that's running behind here. Some people wouldn't like that, but there wasn't any hardware that came with it to mount it, oddly enough. I thought usually there was some kind of hardware that came with it to mount it, um, but it fits very nicely and it's snug. It's not like loose, just that one up top with it wedged in between the dash down low. It's pretty freaking tight. I'm not gonna show you how I did every single small bit of wiring, but I will show you essentially where things go. Boost fitting goes right in there. Your exhaust temperatures goes right there around cylinder four. I think it's more like directly across from cylinder four, but the reason it's placed back there on cylinder four is because Typically, statistically speaking, cylinder six obviously is gonna get the hottest six and five. Usually it's because of the disposition of airflow into the engine, but on this truck, we have the mega twin, which pushes air directly back towards cylinder five, specifically to try to cool the back faster. But essentially, it's hard to say, but it's right behind that like turbo blanket right there. And then for your transmission, it's gonna go right there. This is the passenger side, it goes right there. Just make sure your wire's not touching the stinking exhaust. They're connected there. They run along the bottom of the transmission below that hose there, attached with a zip tie to that wiring harness coming down. And then it goes from there. You can see those wires, the brown and the green. You go straight up into the engine bay and they're fished out of the way of moving parts. So you can't have like a bunch of slack and then your wires end up rubbing on your drive shaft where they get caught up in your column shifter or whatever, anything that moves, make sure it's not touching. And like these wires are suspended nicely, but if they needed to, like when this truck is flexing or hitting rough patches, there's just enough flex in them to where they're not gonna rip. We've got the trans temp, boost pressure, and exhaust temperatures. And no, they're not actually flashing. It's just because of the LEDs in them. It's just kind of making it look like it's doing that through the camera. Let's get on the highway. I wanted to see how these gauges are reading temperatures and stuff um, before we get on the highway. And then I thought about getting on the highway and maybe trying to troll somebody, but we'll see. Let's get the air conditioning on because that helps you go faster. You know, you drive faster when you're cool. So man, this dash top, it is really getting, it's really getting quite, quite cracked. So we might have to get them a new one of those here. Make sure there's no po po leash around here. I love the police, but you know, I don't really love tickets. You know what I'm saying? Let's do a little pull right here. We're clear ahead of us and behind us. Exhaust temps got up to like 750. Boost got up to almost 30. And then when it shifted, the boost pressure dropped, which is expected. freaking fighter jet. <laughs> I love the sound of compound turbos, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not sure who wouldn't like the sound of compounds, but uh, if you don't, I don't know what to tell you. You got some issues, bro. Well, I was trying to use a GoPro and race somebody, but I could not find anybody on my side of the highway that was a contender. And like, if I'm gonna troll somebody, I want it to be somebody that's like a potential 
loss for me. Like, I, I don't want to, like, troll somebody that's, like, obviously, like, okay, it's a four-cylinder Honda Accord. Like, it's not, you know what I mean? Like, it's not that cool because it's, it's not that hard to beat something like that. You know what I mean? But I was working on those gauges for five and a half hours, and it's not hard to do, and they weren't hard to do. It just is time-consuming when you're trying to do everything, make it look clean, and make sure everything functions right, you know, it just takes a lot of time, it, it's not hard, it's just time consuming. It was a lot of fun though, got to get the gauges in this thing finally. But on the highway, it was holding about 600 degrees on the exhaust temperature and about five pounds of boost cruising, and the trans temp didn't move above 150, so, I mean, I think it was holding mostly around 140 when we were cruising, but it definitely never got over 160 degrees, so, I think that's all good. I mean, everything seems to be running great. I was gonna put the fuel pressure gauge in this as well today, but by the time I got done with all this stuff, it was already six o'clock and I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing the fuel gauge and then cracking all the fuel lines to you know, get the thing started up again. I'm like, it's not gonna happen today. Maybe, maybe another day here soon, but just not today. And luckily, this is a P-pump truck with a lift pump and an intake sump. So I'm not super worried about it not having good fuel pressure. It should have plenty of fuel pressure. If it was a 24 valve, um, I'd be a little more concerned. Well, that's gonna be it for Nasty Red today. I tried to find somebody to troll. I just could not find anybody. Everybody that I was seeing was sedans, minivans, SUVs, but like no like go fast stuff or people in like diesels or pickup trucks that I can just tell would want to go at it. So kind of a bummer, but I guess we'll just have to take it out another time.